I am Daniel Foley from the Abundant Life Training Center, and welcome to our daily community meditation, where today we're talking about diligence. We're talking about diligence and all these promises God has made for those who are diligent. We're going to be taking communion over this today, asking for God's help to increase our diligence, because there's some amazing promises for those that are diligent, especially coming from the book of Proverbs. There's a lot of promises in there. But what is diligence? Diligence is care. It's paying attention to the details. It's continuous effort or steadfastness or consistency and paying attention to those little details of all the things that we're doing. Having that diligence in everything that we do. It's a good quality to have. But why are we taking communion every day? Jesus says, as often as you do this, remember me. It's this opportunity to stir his sacrifice into our mind and remembrance and make his sacrifice active and relevant and alive right now in this present moment today. Helps us to abide in Christ so that our lives produce much fruit. The Apostle Paul says, every time we take communion, we're proclaiming the death of Jesus, which in the case of a will or an inheritance, nothing happens until we prove the death. So in a way, communion is like this activation of all these benefits that are found in the new covenant. And it's this opportunity to combine the spiritual principles of the sacrifice of Jesus, to pull the, his sacrifice into our mind and remembrance and imagination and combine it with something practical and physical that we actually do in the cracker and the juice that we can release our faith into. But it's also important we take it the right way. Every time we take communion, to take it with the fear of the Lord. Just that deep honor and reverence and respect and appreciation for the sacrifice of Jesus. All that he was willing to go through, all that God was willing to do to connect us back to him. So the process we typically use, we start with about a two minute long prayer. That's mostly scripture coming from Ephesians chapter one and the prayer of Jabez found in First Chronicles chapter four. And then we take a few minutes to examine ourselves because the apostle Paul says some people are weak and sick. And they die early because they don't examine or judge themselves before taking communion. And then after our time of communion, we've been talking about some practical physical workout advice. Because I truly believe physical exercise is one of the greatest ways for us to practice exercising our faith. Just a physical expression of us exercising our faith. To receive this grace by faith. And to experience God doing the work through us. And then once we understand how to do that, we can apply those same principles into every other area of life. So let's get started with our prayer. And then we'll get into our time of communion after that. Heavenly Father, I pray for all those who are watching or listening, their families, all those connected to them, all of our church and governmental leaders. And I thank you for releasing us from darkness, transferring us into the light, into the kingdom of your dear son. I thank you for your purpose and grace given to us in Christ Jesus before time ever began. And I keep asking that you, the Father of glory, would give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that we would know you better. That the eyes of our hearts would be enlightened to know the hope to which you've called us and the riches of your glorious inheritance that is in us and the immeasurable greatness of your power to us who believe. The same power that you exercised in Christ when you raised him from the dead and seated him at your right hand in heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And you put all things under his feet and made him to be the head of the body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The Father asks you to bless us to make your face shine upon us and let us find grace and favor in your eyes, to expand our borders and our territory, to expand our capacity to receive your purpose and grace, your love and your goodness, and to let it flow through us so that we do good and are a blessing to people all over the world. I should to send us opportunities today to do good and be a blessing and help us be sensitive to those opportunities and make the most of them. I ask you to keep your hand on us and help us do today what's right and best in your eyes and to do it with peace and joy and confidence in you. And we ask you to stretch out your hand to heal and do signs and wonders and keep us from evil and pain through the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 
All right, so now we're going to go through the other half of prayer. This is our time to examine ourselves and to look at, are we making today a masterpiece? How are we going to do it? We're going to get connected to the master. We're going to have this personal relationship with God, this eternal perspective with him. We're going to bring that down into today. Our relationship with him has got to impact today. The things that we do, the things that we speak, the decisions that we make, all impacted by our relationship with him today. And we're going to execute these four fundamentals, making them fun, bringing some energy and some presence into them today. So our first fundamental, let's get positioned in the light today. This is like the on-off switch. Either we're in the light or we're in the darkness. There's no in between. To take our position in the light, we're going to get position in humility today. We're going to humble ourselves today in relationship to God, in relationship to other people. Because it's the humble who are given grace. It's the humble that are exalted and promoted. And we're going to receive this forgiveness from God. We're going to let it flow through us. We're going to forgive ourselves. We're going to stop beating ourselves up and condemning ourselves. And we're going to let it flow through us to other people. Giving them the same grace and forgiveness he's given us. And we're going to take our position in love today. Kind and patient and gentle. Always assuming the best. Keeping no record of wrongs. Delighting in the truth. Always hoping, always trusting, always persevering. Because love never fails. And we're going to take our position in gratitude and praise today. One of the greatest expressions of faith. And we're not just going to think about it. We're going to physically express that gratitude and praise into the world. Through our speech, you can write it out. We can embody gratitude. And one of the greatest expressions of faith. And just getting positioned in that childlike faith today. And when we take our position, we're stepping into Christ. And God has taken everything that he has. And he gave it all to Jesus. Because he was worthy. He was deserving of it. And we get this amazing opportunity. We get to be in him today. So this day, by faith, we have access to his spirit and power and presence, his love and peace and joy, his mind and wisdom, his health and energy, his time, his finances, his kingdom, his purpose. We become part of his family. It's all available in there for us today. And we have to learn how to receive this from him and get it flowing through us. So our first step is to get positioned in it. Then our second step is we're going to start to magnify it. To magnify is to make bigger or greater. We're going to expand the capacity where God can flow more of all these good things through us. It's all about our focus and attention throughout the day. To magnify is all about what we're focused on. I like to think of meditation. What are the things that I'm meditating on? What am I repeating over and over? My repeated thought patterns, my repeated speech patterns, my repeated habits that I do every day. So to magnify the light, we can magnify God's word. Be thinking about it, talking about it, diligently studying it, as we'll talk about today. We could magnify his unfailing love and his faithfulness, his mighty works, that nothing's impossible with him. We can magnify our righteousness in Christ. We've got peace with God. We've got his blessing and favor on our lives. He eagerly desires to help us. We can magnify every good thing that he put within us. We've got this treasure in jars of clay. Everything needed for life and godliness, he's already put within us. We can magnify all the things that are going well and whatever is lovely and just and true and praiseworthy and of good report. And all that God has already done in our lives. Because what he started, he's going to finish. What he started, he's going to sustain. He's going to see it through to completion. Now, this is not denying that there's issues or problems. It's choosing to bring them into the light. And we're going to magnify God as bigger than those issues and problems. Rather than choosing to magnify this pro the size of the problems. But he does give us a choice. We could choose not to do any of this. We could stay stuck in pride and rebellion, insisting on our own way, looking out for ourselves. Magnifying the size of the issues and problems, venting and complaining, trying to figure it all out ourselves rather than resting and trusting in God to flow through us. And that's where we're going to recognize the symptoms. When we're in darkness or we're positioned in it, we're magnifying it. Might be the tendency to retaliate at people or snap at people. Maybe withhold good things that we know to do because they did something to me, they said something. Maybe we avoid people, we withdraw our presence. 
give them the silent treatment. And none of these are the way of unconditional love and grace. None of those are the way of the light. God, we're supposed to be loving other people. We're supposed to be receiving that love and grace from him and letting that flow through us to other people. And some of the symptoms we'll experience, there will be this heaviness and weight and pressure on the inside. Like it's all sitting on you. Might have feelings of hopelessness or helplessness or powerlessness. Like you're trapped or you're stuck and it seems like there's no way out. Low energy is another big symptom of this as well. Then emotionally, there's the fear and stress and worry, the dread of the future. There's confusion about which steps to take or which direction to go. Get stuck in these vicious cycles and bad patterns that just keep repeating over and over. But when we take our position in the light, there's this rest in our soul. There's this fullness in him. Nothing missing, nothing lacking. We're complete in him. And when we rest, God goes to work. And now everything is free and easy and effortless because we've got his spirit and power and energy and peace and joy and mind and wisdom all begin to flow through us. And now all of a sudden we've got hope in any and every situation because we've got God with us. He just begins to effortlessly set us free, directing our path becomes this beautiful thing. And if all this weren't enough, God gives us this amazing gift of grace that if we ever get off track, it just takes a moment to turn it right back around to get back positioned in the light again. Because life's throwing stuff at us every day. Trying to pull us out of position, trying to get us to magnify the wrong things. If we ever get off track, it just takes a second to turn it around. But we have to have the awareness of it. To recognize those symptoms and say, wait a minute, I'm off track right now. I've lost my positioning. I've lost my focus. I'm magnifying the wrong things. How do we turn it back around? We start with humility. Father, forgive me. Father, forgive me. I've missed it. We receive that forgiveness from him. We forgive ourselves. If we need to say we're sorry or reconcile with somebody else, we take those steps. And then we just start praising and thanking him for his grace and his goodness and his love. And that what he put within us is more than enough to handle whatever's coming out our way today. There's grace for whatever's coming our way today. And you'll feel that shift on the inside. The weight will lift off you. Your energy levels will rise up. You'll feel the peace and the joy and the love just begin to wash over you. You'll feel that fullness in him. Happens in just an instant. And then we're going to stay tuned in today. Every day God's trying to lead us and train us and navigate our path. But we're going to stay tuned in to him. My favorite way to do this is with a journal before bed. I like to start with gratitude and praise to get my positioning. Then I like to magnify. What went well today? What are the ways I saw God showing up today? And then it's good to reflect back over the day. How was my positioning? How was my focus and attention? What was I magnifying today? Any areas that I need to make some adjustments in? And we bring those areas to God asking for his help. And then I like to write out this question. I like to ask this question. God, what are you trying to show me today? And just get still and listen, reflect back over the day. And whatever comes into your mind, just begin to write those things down. It's important to get it out of our heads and onto the paper because it helps us to remember and not forget. And then we've got to stay tuned in to him as we go throughout the day. You ever feel like you're losing that connection with him? Just slow down for a minute or two. Get powered up in him again. Think of it like plugging a phone back in. Then the final thing I've learned to do in my journal is to plan out the upcoming day with God. And I've learned to stick with, what do I know to do today? What do I know to do today? Because I learned sometimes I was getting ahead of God. I would pray and ask for his wisdom and direction and whatever the next steps may be. But sometimes I wasn't waiting for him to show me. And I would just go ahead and do whatever I thought was best. And I learned sometimes I was making mistakes. I was getting ahead of him. And I've learned to say, you know, I don't want to do what I think is best. I want to do what you say is best. On the other side, sometimes I was getting behind God because I was procrastinating on things that I knew to do. So I've learned, what do I know to do today? And that becomes the plan for today. You could do the same thing for the week, for the month, for the year. What do I know to do in these time intervals? And that becomes the plan. 
And then we wake up like a kid on Christmas morning, excited for the day, because this is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to get connected to him. We're going to start praising him and thanking him and magnifying him. And then we're going to walk out that plan together with him today, with a willing heart, with a good attitude and full confidence in him. That confident faith, when we get to that place of that confident faith where all the doubt is removed, we're just confident. He's right there with us all day today. That grace begins to flow. When that grace begins to flow, he begins to go to work. He begins to beautify our lives. He's the source of beauty. And beauty is attractive and magnetic and just begins to pull more and more of everything God has for us into our lives. So let's take a look at these scriptures today. So diligence. I was just having a conversation with a guy the other day, and just this word diligence just kept coming up, and it kept just kind of standing out to me. So the dictionary definition of diligence is careful and persistent work or effort. Some people, some think, talk about continuous energy, steadfastness, or consistency. I think of this, just care. Putting some care into the things that we're doing. Being diligent and paying attention and caring for things properly. So here's some scriptures on this. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 4. A slack hand causes poverty, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. Proverbs 12, 27. Whoever is slothful will not roast his game. But the diligent man will get precious wealth. Proverbs 13, 4. The soul of the sluggard craves and gets nothing, but the soul of the diligent is richly supplied. Proverbs 12, 24. The hand of the diligent will rule, while the slothful will be put to forced labor. Proverbs 21, 5. The plans of the diligent lead surely to abundance, but everyone who is hasty comes to poverty. 2 Peter 3.14, therefore, beloved, since you're waiting for these, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. Be diligent to be found without spot or blemish and at peace. Hebrews 6.11, we want each of you to show the same diligence to the very end so that what you hope for may be fully realized. <clears throat> so what we hope for for it to be fully realized, it's going to take diligence to get to that place. The things that we're believing, the things that we're hoping for, it's going to take diligence is what this has shown us. So we're going to take communion over this, asking for God's help with this. Heavenly Father, we're just so thankful for you, for this opportunity to remember the sacrifice of Jesus. And we're asking for your help today. To help us to get this diligence in our life the way you designed it to function. And for us to be continually growing in this from this point on in our lives. Some of these amazing promises, we just thank you for that. We're asking for this diligence so that the things that we hope for will be fully realized. We could be found without spot or blemish and at peace in him. We thank you that on the night Jesus was betrayed. He took the bread and said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he said, take it. Receive it. Then he makes you right and holy and perfect in God's sight. Through his one sacrifice. You can approach him with freedom and confidence. And the cup of God's wrath was poured onto the body of Jesus. So we can have the cup of his blessing. Father, we just thank you for this bread and this opportunity to remember. I wish you to bless it in Jesus' name. If you have your bread, you can take your bread. So after supper, Jesus took the cup. He said, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, poured out for the forgiveness of sins for many. This new covenant, we can have this personal relationship with him. We can know him. And that's what it's all about. So Father, we thank you for this cup. 
ask you to bless it in Jesus' name. If you have a juice, you can take a juice. All right. So one of the ways for us to start applying this diligence is in our health and fitness. How diligent are we being in our physical exercise? Again, it's a, it's a physical expression of exercising our faith. How diligent are we being in our exercise? How consistent are we being? How much are we paying attention to the details? How's our record keeping and tracking of progress over time? One of the most important things, just tracking progress over time. I used to tell this to my trainers in the gym all the time. I had a personal training gym for a number of years. I used to tell my trainers this all the time. A lot of people exercise, but very few people train. A lot of people exercise, but very few people train. To train means you have a plan, you have a purpose, and you're paying attention to the details. You're exercising this diligence. A lot of people exercise, but very few people train. And that's the difference. To go into training, the Bible talks about we are in training. And applying that, that mindset into our exercise. But I hope this has been helpful for you today. If you'd like to learn more about partnering with us in the Abundant Life Blueprint, you go to the Abundant Life Training Center.com.